Hello my Sock Universe, I'm gonna return back to my regular scheduling and by breaking my winter break and talking about the winter pause or winter break in English uh, of the Austrian Bundesliga which has quite an interesting story. I wanna look at what the winter break means nowadays but also look back because Austria had a very unique winter break in many ways that unfortunately does not exist anymore. But yes, let's first talk about why do we have a winter break in the Austrian Bundesliga? Well, uh, it makes all kinds of sense if you just look at the climate. Austria is known for its snow and its skiing. Yes, there's a whole lot of snow. I mean, less than it used to be. But during the months of December, January and February, especially if you go towards the Alpine regions, uh, it is really hard to imagine uh, football being played in Austria. Uh, Snow-covered grounds, also traffic and all that, that kind of stuff. It's just not fun. Let's put it this way. Yes, uh, it has been a little bit mitigated now that all the Austrian Bundesliga teams need to have pitch heating. But on the other side, if you have a frozen ground and you turn on that, you just turn the pitch into mud, which is also something you don't really want to uh, have. So the not so mild climate in Austria during the winter is a major contributing factor for having a winter break. Now, as I already alluded to, the winter break um, is becoming a little bit shorter every year. I mean, this uh, year we are starting on the 1st of February to come back after all the teams went on to win winter break, the latest on the 14th of December. This was last Sturm when they were done with their European commitments. Uh, the league itself, um, all the other teams uh, since the 10th of December on winter break. And for most teams, this actually means that the players up until this past weekend are really on a break. Um, as I said, uh, uh, we return to the winter break already in the first weekend of February, which is ridiculously early in most of the cases, but this time it has been shifted uh, in order to allow the Austrian national team to prepare even better for the upcoming Euros. Otherwise, it would have been all a week later, if you would like. Um, but yes, uh, when in the 90s, when I was, usually the winter break started either last weekend of November already and went, usually it came back, uh, the break lasted really until maybe last weekend of February or first weekend of March. As we already see, it has been shortened. Well, uh, climate change has something to do with it, but also the pressures of international football, because now, nowadays we return mid-February. Uh, to the Champions League um, and since Austrian teams over the past let's say five six seven years have been doing actually quite well and by that I mean mostly Salzburg but you know we had other we had usually teams making it through the winter this year for instance the Sturm Graz um, so having this early comeback of European football also means that Austrian teams very often have played the first European game uh, without having any championship game and so in order to help there you want to start at least have one round of play before the clubs go back to European play. This is also a reason why the summer break has been shortened because uh, typically in summer the league started almost like a German Bundesliga now in mid-August now we are uh, almost mid-July, very, very starts because Austrian teams used to play early in the qualification rounds. They still do some of them. And so again, that they get a little bit of a competitive advantage and get back into playing, the summer break was moved forward. So what that now means, while the winter break is getting a little bit shorter, it's still a good two months of complete halt to stuff and the players are actually getting an active rest probably as much rest, if not more so, than they do get in the summer period. Uh, so we had now the reports, I think all the Bundesliga uh, teams are now back into uh, preparations for the second part of, of the season. But in many cases, this is actually the main part of the preparation because the summer break is really, really short. If you think about it, I mean, the championship ends late May, early June, then there's usually a national team break or you have a big tournament, which means we're pushing already into July and then the league starts again. So the summer break is usually ridiculously short as compared to other uh, leagues. 
And so in many ways, the main preparation window for coaches and also the squat building window is very, very often already the winter break. It actually allows you now that you have um, the winter break, you have now the uh, transfer window opening. It actually does allow you to get in new players and actually break them in. And just as an example, last last, last, last season, I uh, got three new players and they all became eventual starters. So uh, as I said, it's not uncommon to be able to break in new players because you actually have the build up phase in the winter break. So that's why it's important. And that's why I'm also uh, unlike for, for instance, Milan, my other team, I'm actually looking forward here to the transfer window because there could be something interesting happening. I know that Lusk, now that the European uh, duty is unfortunately over, they are probably trying to reduce the squad, but there might still be some interesting arrivals coming. As for the future, I actually can foresee, I mean, this is now the second shortest winter break ever. I remember in the 2021 season, because this was the season that was a little bit affected by Corona, so the start of that season was pushed a little bit back means that the winter break had, had to have shortened and Austrian Bundesliga were back in January. Uh, this time around, being in early February, is probably the, f the first time that the regular season starts that early. But I see that this might be the future, that only January is really off and that we really start in fair February again. Although it is, it can get really cold and nasty uh, at these games. I mean, or, or so if you saw the the November round, the last uh, home game in the league where we had a major snowstorm. Yeah, it was not. I mean, on one side it's fun. On the other side, you know, you're actively freezing if you have bad seats like we had, where all the wind is coming at you. But in general, I see it that this uh, might become. A little bit shorter or might become the standard that is like a six seven week break instead of what used to be a three month break just because um, however the winter break you know for the sports fan in Austria it doesn't mean that there's nothing to watch I mean it actually fits quite conveniently with the average Austrian sports fan which is not me you know I'm all in on watching soccer uh, not so much uh, the, the average Austrian sportsman because uh, now that uh, football or slash soccer, I've used those uh, terms interchangeably as, as you know, is gone, this actually allows you to focus on the other big sport in Austria. And you can guess which one that is. Yes, I'm talking skiing. Skiing is a major, major, major factor. And the first really big ski races usually happened in early December. Yes, in, in, in um, November you usually had the American races which are prime time but the, you can get really the european tour get started somewhere in early early December with the real classics in skiing coming then uh, mid -Gen, january uh, in fact we're looking forward to the next weekend and the weekend after the other uh, the two races in wengen and kitzburg which are the highlights of the calendar during the christmas break there's also another one there's not only some skiing races but there's also nordic skiing which is my personal favorite especially ski jumping uh, where there's the Four Hills Tournament, which uh, starts on the 29th well, with qualification on the 28th of December and then goes up until the 6th of Jan January for com com competitions, one on New, New Year's Day, there are two in Germany, two in Austria. It's actually something that almost every Austrian grows up with and Austrians are doing uh, quite well in that too. Having said that, those competitions got a little bit of uh, football and competition up until 2009 with a very unique and very very special event that was held in Austria and arguably was the best in Europe at that and that is indoor soccer and not the type that we have now in futsal or that used to be played in in America this was its own very unique thing it was ori it originated in Vienna and then spread at least to other countries that were taking a winter break as well. And I want to actually share a little bit of that because I'm on one side I understand why it is not existing anymore. On the other side this was such a staple uh, that I really mourn a bit that does not happen anymore. Indoor soccer in the so-called Stadthalle which is Austria's largest indoor venue uh, as I said was the entertainment 
on the footballing wise that you could have in winter in Aust Austria and it very much goes back to a time where you know you couldn't watch all the leagues left left and right you were only focused what was happening within all Austria so it's very much uh, a pre-globalization uh, thing in addition uh, but in its origins it happened in the, the late 50s when Pepe Agawa the coach of the Austrian Nas national team at the uh, 58 World Cup said you know in the winter the clubs have no income they actually only lose losing money let's make it something uh, to earn a little bit more money and you know back then it was very much Vienna centric and he proposed uh, an indoor tour tournament to be held in the Stadthalle I said Austria's largest indoor venue holding about 15 16,000 or something like that and while the clubs were not initially on board and neither was the football federation uh, the owners of the Stadthalle very much were on board and uh, they made this tournament at first it was in February but the first tournament was already a big success with ha uh, having 11 14 and I think uh, 13,000 spectators on the three days that this tournament was held now you have to imagine it and I probably will post a clip of one of the highlight matches of uh, its his history from the 80s and we'll talk about that in, in a sec. Uh, how can you imagine that? Well, imagine a hardwood floor with a boundary around a rectangular bar, boundary and then like in handball a little circle across the goal with a penalty spot which I think was a seven meter spot like in handball and the goals I think were also two times three meters like a handball goal so uh, there were the dimensions land itself uh, towards that uh, the game was played five on five players plus a goalkeeper and it was not about um, you know, it, 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 it's not about at first winning, but more it was a skillful play. It was really, uh, if you like, Jogo Bonito, which fits very much into the deep soul of uh, Vienna football, where you saw the little tricks, you saw uh, a lot of back heels, you saw a lot of passes with the side foot. Uh, that the no one uh, attempted shots from far out. I think Pep Guardiola would have been really, really, really happy with this type of football. And yes, it was helped that in the 60s, um, when this became then really popular, the pace of the game was, of course, a much, much slower one. It really reached its heyday once this was uh, shifted to what was then the traditional spot of the, the tournament. It was played on six days. It usually had around eight teams or six teams that um, most of them were locally from Vienna. So you had the big boys in there. You had Rapid, you had Austria, you had Sportclub, you had Vienna, but you had probably other teams in there as well. And most crucially, they came with the stars. So you had them all in a very confined environment and they were playing and actually having fun. Um, and naturally, as I said, it was more about skill than about, you know, uh, uh, rough fighting and, and so on. Now, naturally, this suited one particular team in Vienna, and that is Austria Vienna, who were the absolute uh, champions, especially when they had a midfield with uh, Herbert Prohaska, Felix Gastelich, Ernst Baumeister, and so on. They were the kings of the Stadthalle, winning from the late 70s to the uh, 80s, almost like Bayern Munich, this 11, 10 or 11 times in a row in the Wiener Stadthalle. But before that, uh, it was also a way uh, to invite some other teams that you wouldn't see in all, all Austria. I, I remember that both Budapest uh, giants like Ferenc and Wipusht have been invited, that there was uh, a sort of Brazilian team that got in. Uh, but also, of course, you got the big German names and most no notably in the early 70s, Bayern Munich with Gerd Müller, Franz Beckenbauer and so on, got invited and actually won the tournament, which was a rare occasion that an outside uh, team won, because especially Austria Vienna in their late 70s, mid 80s um, heyday, were probably the best indoor team in all of Europe, to the point that they actually got invited to other tour tour tournaments, for instance, uh, into Munich where uh, one of the players, uh, defender Ro uh, Rosario, was asked about the tournament and said, I worry more about playing Sportclub in the Stadthalle than I worry about any of the opponents at the tournament in Munich, which of course included Bayern Munich, 1860 Munich and Nuremberg and, 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 and so on. In order to make more money, they also were invited to other teams. They made veritable tours in the 80s. 
they didn't all always win because they got a little bit exhausted from that. However, there's all also the story that um, Austrian le legend Herbert Prohaska loved playing in the Stadthalle so much that even when he came down with a fever and the, uh, a staff member kind of suggested uh, that he probably should rest, he said, you give me the pills and don't say any, any anything, otherwise I will have you fired. He loved playing it so much. And at that point, the tournament was actually such a staple that it was taken quite seriously as well. As I said, it was more about Austria Vienna than Rapid Vienna. Rapid Vienna also won the tournament a few, few times, but Austria Vienna in uh, all the day won it 19 times. So they're by far the Stadthalle champions and mostly with the beautiful play. And as I said, I put up a final, I think, from the mid 80s where this Austria team in its glory form is well on display. Now the whole thing took a nosedive in during the mid 90s and you know the indoor format then from Vienna was also copied in Germany uh, where they played it all over the place but they've then used more or less an artificial pitch in a much smaller field and they created of course Germans need to make a competition out of it and made a German competition format. Uh, it went also to other Austrian cities. I remember seeing the last tournament in Linz in 98. So in Linz they started I think in 79 so it has a 20 year history being played in Linz. There was also one in Graz. And I want to say in Innsbruck for sure. Uh, so those were, but in other low occasions as, as well, indoor tournaments were really, really a thing. But why not any, any, any anymore? Well, first off, um, and I remember this was in the mid 90s when I, st shortly after I started, started watching, there was a team from second division called Donaufeld was invited. And they started playing rather defensively and slow. And yes, they were a sensation because they were a second division team that was doing really well in the overall tournament. However, I so thought this is not what this is for. But because there was prize money to, 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 to be won, the tournament actually got a little bit more competitive. Then Austria tried to also copy the German format and make an all over, overall Austrian tour tournament. And uh, the first time they did it, actually Lasko just won the Linz tournament, got some points. They also won the Vienna tournament and got into uh, the finals as the fa favorites, which they ended up not not winning. It was the only title that Hans Kranke ever won with Austria Salz or Salzburg with a rather defensive style. That made it already less attractive. And because of this tournament format where teams can qualify for finals, you didn't have the invitational character anymore, which also added to the flair of the entire tour tournament. Add to it that it was realized that this tournament has also quite some injury risk and you couldn't get the foreign players in any anymore and the Austrian stars also didn't want to have that as much anymore. So you got more or less seconds removed, but did not become as attractive anymore. And this is another thing that is, uh, was a real downer that the um, stars were not up, up, up for anymore. Because why was, was, was it so popular? Because not only did you see your team, you saw the stars playing. Squads were not as bloated uh, back in the 70s, 60s, 80s. Uh, so you really had your first 11 players playing on two lines that were interchanging. And in, in addition, in the breaks, they had, of course, time to, uh, you know, to meet the fans, to make some signing sessions and all that. Kind of stuff. So you had them actually there to actually uh, really communicate and interact with them as well. So that was already dwindling, which also meant that it became less attractive, less spectators coming. The money just didn't hold up. I have to say the feeling of the Stadthalle is actually a special one. I, I was at one of the last tournaments, 2007, when Lars Wall was playing because we had the star player of that tournament, Ivica Savastic, who was another very technically adept player and therefore a very loved uh, Lask. I think became only third in the tour tournament, but that was beside the point. Uh, so we had more physically defensive play, leading also to more injury risk. The stars were not up for it, but there are other com components. As I said, financially it did not work out. Uh, but nowadays when people are talk, talking about restarts, I think it, another major issue here is that uh, the ultra culture is meanwhile very much there. And now instead of having the occasional, you know, fist fight between supporters that don't get on, you would have more or less armies of rivaling fans having under the same roof the policing of that. And just think about pyro pyrotechnics, which is, of course, a big issue in Austria. That would not work well 
for sure too so there you have a security risk and unfortunately it's now almost 15 years that we did not have a Stadthalle tournament or any other indoor tournament in Austria anymore although on the youth level it still works quite well I think there was an Austria-Vienna team that completely um, ravaged the competition international com 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 competition in Germany so it would be still there fortunately it's not gonna happening anymore but this was for me grow growing up basically something that I must watch because you know I started on 26th of December went to the 28th and it took a break and came back on the 2nd of January, January to the 4th of January and it was a real fun thing to watch good memories unfortunately it's no more however on the other side now we can watch the Premier League anytime so there is this calm calm, calm competition as, as as well and kind of makes a little bit up for losing a Stadthalle although it was something very unique very Austrian and uh, to finish it up I also have to say it annoys me that this variant of indoor football did not become more popular that it's now futsal is what is played and I've watched some futsal and it's just not the same especially since you know you have your own futsal professionals which I understand but the charm of the whole thing is that you had the first team players of your team playing indoor very close uh, very personal it's a thing of the past but in any case let me know what you think about the win win winter break um, whether you would prefer to have a winter break in your league I know Germany does have a, win uh, a winter break Serie A now this, this year around has again decided to cut the winter break because usually they also had a two week period of uh, between Christmas and New Year that does not happen any, any, anymore and you know in the southern climes of course there's always it's easier to play but yeah I don't want to be on, uh, now on Klopp's side and beating the bush that uh, we got to get rid of Boxing Day fixtures because that's also tradition in England that I has to be held up it's more like Boxing Day and maybe the New Year's Day that they play and not shoving another round in the middle but that's another thing uh, I also would like to know if you heard about the Stadthallen tournament the indoor soccer tournament in Vienna or if you know any other type of indoor soccer that would have been for that was fun to watch in any case that was it from me slightly diff different video but I thought I'll share this with you and I will talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe bye hey there I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too also please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe and with that have a wonderful day bye